Hello, everybody. Welcome to Words of Life. Glory be to God. And uh, we're going to talk about today the power of God to us. Amen. And I'm also broadcasting on Discord. Who do I got on Discord email? Uh, me and Marcelo. Oh, your sister. Okay. Hello, Marcelo. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Let's get in our study tonight, Tuesday night. And the notes will be on our Discord server. So if you want those, the link is in the description. Amen. James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. The Effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. This word, this, this big long word, the effectual fervent prayer, me is the Greek word in in erigo, in erigo. It means to um it's a, means to be effective, active, self-working, mighty, and to show forth. So, in other words, when we pray. Our prayers are effective, working, and mighty and showing forth, and they avail much. Amen? And that is the power of God. It's nothing we have anything to do with, but it's everything on what God has to do with. And remember, uh, you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So all we have to do is do the praying part and have faith in the power of God, car, uh, God part to bring to pass what we're praying. Amen? Let's look at another one, James chapter 5, or uh, James chapter 5, verse 17. Elijah, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions. Now, this word subject to like passions is homos, homos, uh, homeosathus or something like that, homeo. In other words, the scriptures say that Elijah was just a human, subject to the same things we're subject to, uh, of like mind, um, subject to the same afflictions. And I know a lot of times when we think of Elijah, we think of this great, powerful man of God. But, okay. the, but the scripture lets us know that he was just subject to things just like you and I are. Just a normal, regular, run-of-the-mill person that was praying. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Amen. So just by him praying, and he was a normal, everyday schmo, just like you and I, just because he was Elijah, wasn't didn't mean anything. That's what Scripture's letting us know. But even he was able to pray and stop, stop the rain. And it rained not on earth for three whole years. And after three years, he prayed again, and the rain come. So children of God, what the scripture is telling us is that it's not about us. Amen? It's not about us. It's about who we're speaking to or who we're praying to. Hallelujah. The power of God. So it's not about you and I, but it's about him, the one we know above. Amen? Let's go check out some more of Elijah here. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 18. Kings 18, 18. And he answered and said, and he answered and he said, I have not troubled Israel. They've accused Elijah of troubling Israel. Well, I've skipped a verse. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab said to him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And Elijah said, I'm not the one troubling Israel. It's not me. He says, he says, it's you guys, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and you have followed after Balaam. It's not me that's troubling Israel. It's you guys who are not serving God. Amen? It's so easy to point fingers at a human being whom we could see, when the reality is their problem was that they were not serving God like they knew and they should. Amen? Praise God. So, this is what Elijah said. He says, Now therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal. 
450 of the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Elijah wants 450 prophets of the groves, and he wants all the prophets of Baal. Baal, or Baal, or however you pronounce it. I'll just say Baal. <laughs> he said about 850 people. He says, gather them all up. Bring them over here. So Ahab sent to the, unto the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. So he's got all their prophets of the false god Baal. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If he's the real God, go after him. But, but if it's Baal, well then follow Baal. And it be him, and the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah to the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Now, let them therefore give us two bullocks, those are animals, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it into pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under it myself. And I want you to call on Baal. I want you to call on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord God. And the God that answers by fire, well, let him be God. And all the people answered said, it is well spoken. Mind you, all of Israel's gathered around this, this show. And now it's time they, the, Elijah's going to put their God on the line. And in the people's minds, they think Baal is real. So they're saying, yeah, let's do this thing. It sounds good. This is a good plan. See who answers. And so all the prophets of Baal are put on the spot. And so they have to get their bullock ready because all the, this is what all the people want and get their uh, wood ready and get ready to start praying to Baal. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bullocks yourselves, dress it first, for you are many, and call in the name of your God, but put no fire under it. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called in the name of Baal from morning, evening, until noon. So now the prophets of Baal are going, Oh, Baal, oh, Baal, oh, Baal, 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 Baal. <laughs> Hear us. Hear us. And they did this from early morning. Until lunchtime. Amen? Yeah, but there was no voice, and nobody answered him. And they left upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or pre-adventure, he's sleeping. But he must be awake. Paul must be on lunch, guys. You've been calling him all morning. Nothing's going on. Well, What's happening here? You guys better call louder. Maybe he's maybe he took a lunch break and he can't hear you. And so they cried aloud, even more aloud, and they start cutting themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till blood gushed out upon them. So they start cutting themselves trying to get Paul's attention. Amen. And it came to pass when midday was passed. Now noon has already passed. And they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. So now the evening's rolling up. They've been cutting themselves. They've been hollering all day long. Trying to get Baal's attention here. Amen. And Elijah said unto the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar, the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood. And, said, and then Elijah said, I want you guys to take four barrels, big barrels, and I want you to fill them with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifices on the wood. And they went and did that. And then he said to them, you know what? Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, huh, you know what? I want you to fill those barrels again and do it a third time. 
And they did it a third time. And the water ran about the altar and filled the trench also with water. Amen. And it came to pass the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Mind you, Baal's prophets have been there all day long, petting themselves, hollering, oh, Baal, all oh, Baal. All the people are watching them. Because a lot of the people there also serve Baal. And so they, their God is on the line here. He's on the line. But at the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob and, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Amen. Now Elijah's over his bullock and his wood is soaked. His wood is wet. <laughs> Water's running all over the place. Amen. Come on now. Now this is the time when rubber meets the road. Amen. It's no. It's not time to debate anymore. It's not time to see a uh, debate and and get on Discord to find out which God is better. It's not time to debate a doctrine. This is where rubber meets the road. If God is real, God will show himself forth in, in the prophet's life, Elijah's life. If God's not, well, then his wood stays wet and the water stays there and nothing changes. Amen. Come on. This is like a lot of Christians, too. A lot of Christians are debating God, debating this, debating that doctrine. Uh, but there's no power. There's no power in their life to show others. There's no power of God in them. They just debate, debate, debate. But did you know we serve a God of power? And when God, the power hits, all debate's over. Amen? <laughs> Everything is done once the power of God shows up. It's not time for a debate anymore. It's time to see our Heavenly Father in action. Because that puts everything to rest. So Elijah prayed. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed and burnt the sacrifice and the wood and burned up the stones and the dust. And not only that, the fire licked up and dried up all the water that was in the trench. Kabam! And when all the people saw it, they fell on their face. <laughs> well, you better believe they did. You can imagine the look on the followers of Baal's eyes when they saw that the Lord God, the real true God of Israel, and that fire hit, kabam, they're on the ground. Amen. Come on. You know, uh, people, we could talk, 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 and talk all we want, debate scripture. But the real, th but the real thing about serving God is when his power hits. We serve a God of power. I want everybody to say we serve a God of power. And all this talk, Time for talk and debate in Elijah's time here. It's over. There's no more debating whether Baal is real or not. They called on him all day. They jumped up and down. They yelled, holler, and screamed. They cut themselves. Their blood was all over the place trying to get Baal's attention. And all Elijah had to do was step up, made sure it was nice and wet, and call upon the Lord God, our God, our Heavenly Father. And everything got burned up just like that. And Elijah said, when the people saw it, they fell on their face and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. What got the people's mind to change? When our heavenly father, when daddy showed up and showed out, amen? That's when things changed. When the power of God hits, people change their tune. Come on. People say, well, miracles have passed away. Wait till miracles start. Wait till they see somebody's limb get regrown and let them say that. Amen. All the debate at that point's over. Tongues have passed away. Well, let's see the power of tongues. And people who pray in tongues, how mighty their life is in prayer. The debate becomes over because there's power in praying in tongues. Amen. This is where we ought to be resting in the power of God. Not in doctrines of men, not in debates and scrabbles with other Christians over this, that, and the other. We ought to just sit back and know that the power of God rests in our life because it's the same power that burned up the wet wood, wet bullock, and even the stones got destroyed. Hallelujah. 
That's our God. And when he shows up, that's when all the talk stops. No more else to say after he shows up. Hallelujah. But unfortunately, there's some people who just don't get it. 2 Timothy 3, chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, this know also that in the last day, per perilous times shall come. Things aren't getting any better, folks. <laughs> We're closer to the last days today than yesterday. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient parents, unthankful, and unho unholy. I want you to know people who debate a lot, debate scripture, they are proud. They got all this word knowledge, and they, well, I can overcome anything. My doctrine stands. They're proud. That's pride. That's not resting in the power of God. That's resting in everything you studied that you can get over on somebody else. Disobedient, covetous, lovers of their own selves. They always like to, they, they love how they look in front of others. They like to look wise and smart in front of others. They have no natural affliction. They're truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. A lot of people confess to be Christians out there. No power. No power. Why? Well, because their faith isn't in his power. Their faith is in their intellect and all the, everything they've studied. Their faith is in their knowledge. Amen. Now, that's just a small segment everybody uh, Paul listed here. You, we still have the blasphemers, disobedient, unthankful, and holy. Uh, this is a long list of people, the saved and unsaved, that deny God's power. No talk, no expectation from heaven that God's power could come on them any time to fix things. No expectation that their prayers are going to get answered. Come on, what did we read at the beginning of this? We read that Elijah... Was just like you and I. Homeothesis, I think it's pronounced. Just just the normal, regular guy like I. But he, you and I, but he prayed. He prayed and it did not rain for three years and six months. Amen. Stop the rain. A guy just like you and I. Who the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, if you know Jesus Christ, you're the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. You qualify for this power of prayer. You qualify. Amen. And notice it's not us that have to perform. Huh? We're praying to the big guy. Amen. He's the one that does the works. And Mark, in fact, Mark 16, it says, uh, Lord goes with us, confirming his word with signs following. Glory be to God. Now, in Jesus' time, Jesus had a, uh, he, they had a dispute about the resurrection. I'm just going to quote you what he said. Jesus answered said, Do you not therefore err? Because you know not the scriptures, neither the power of God. They thought they had knowledge. But they didn't even understand the scriptures as they thought they did. But one thing the Pharisees and Sadducees lacked, they lacked the power of God in their life. Sure, they may have some customs and some answers that were right according to the, to the word of God, but they had no power. You didn't read in the Bible how the Sadducees and Pharisees were healing. Not on the Sabbath day, of course, but they healed up to Saturday or Sunday or whenever the Sabbath was. You didn't read that. They had no power. When Jesus came, they saw not only the power, but they saw the word being backed by that power. This is why they were so upset at him. They had no ability. They had no power of God in their lives. And Jesus told them, uh, you, you, don't need, you don't know the power of God. And it was available to them. All they had to do is listen to Jesus, fall and get in line. Amen. That's all they had to do. But you and I, we don't want to be ignorant of the power of God we want to have our faith in his ability and his power. Acts chapter 26, verse 14. Let's turn there. And we were fall, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? This is Saul on the way to Damascus. And this is when the Lord Jesus met him on the way. And he said, Saul, Saul. 
Why are you persecuting me? Is it hard for you to kick against the pricks? And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. Now Jesus said to him, But arise and stand on thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, whom I now send thee. Now listen to this. Jesus told Paul this, to open their eyes and to turn them from the darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto the power of God, that they might receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Paul's mission was to go to take this news to people that they can be delivered from the power of Satan and into the power of God. But not only that, the message Paul preached to them is that you now have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. That's what he was told to preach. What's an inheritance? Well, uh, that's stuff. Stuff we get. Stuff that belongs to us once Jesus becomes our Lord. That was the message. And to have the power of God in our life. That was the gospel message Paul preached. That was his commission to get people out of the hands of the enemy that came to kill, steal, and destroy their lives, to take away their children, to, to get them fired from their jobs, to break their things at home, to stop their car from working, get them out of the hands of the enemy and into the power of God where things have life, things are resurrected back into order, things that people have let go because of lack of diligence or doing evil things to restore back to them those things and to have an inheritance. Hallelujah. Daddy ain't broke, neither are you. Now, 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 the, of, the devil would like you to believe you are, but you're not. Because the message was to get you out of the power and hands of the enemy who wants you broke, who wants you sick, who wants you depressed, who wants no joy in your life, and get you back into the hands of God, who wants to bless you and prosper you and give you, give you a good ending, hallelujah, to give you his inheritance to show you everything that belongs to your healing, the wealth, the sound mind, the peace, the joy, the prosperity. And that's what Paul was sent out to do for the people. Once again, let me read this to you. I want you to open their eyes, Paul, and turn them from darkness to light. Paul, I want you to turn them from the power of Satan and into the power of God, Paul. Jesus said, I want them to receive forgiveness. In other words, I want you to let them know they can be forgiven. And everything and anything they've done gets washed away by my blood, Paul. I want you to tell the people that. And they have an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. If they'll believe in me and have faith in me, they have an inheritance. I'll meet their needs. I'll meet their place of peace. I'll get their family back and restored. I'll set things in order for them. I'll give them things that they ask for in my name. The Father will give it to them because they have an inheritance. And folks, that takes the power of God. Amen? It takes power to bring those stuff forth into our life. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody get excited today. This is exciting stuff. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. The Lord speaking here through Paul, and he said, I and I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech. That's what Paul's saying. I didn't come to you with excellent speech, you know, or of wisdom. I, in other words, Paul said, I didn't come to you with the gift of gab, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Paul said, when I came to you guys to tell you about God, it wasn't with great speech. It wasn't, uh, I wasn't a, like, like being a great speaker the, with the gift of gab. No. Now, when I came to tell you about God, it was this way. He said, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all I want. All I know all my knowledge and everything. I said it behind because all that wasn't important. Come on, did Jesus appear to Paul? Yes, he did. Did Paul have visions and revelation? Yes, he did. Did Paul know a lot of stuff? Yeah, yes, he did. Wrote most of the New Testament. But when he approached people, he, he, he erased all that knowledge and stuff. Just Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why? Because it was through Jesus. Remember what Jesus told him. 
Jesus said, those that are sanctified by faith in me get the power of God, get the inheritance. So when Paul came to the people, all he knew was Jesus Christ crucified so he can get to them the power of God, get them delivered from Satan, and get to them that inheritance God has. Come on, Daddy lives on streets of gold. Hallelujah. He's got it all. You ain't going to break his bank account by asking too big, okay? The thing is, you and I got to get our faith to the place where we can learn to ask big. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Paul said, I was with you in meekness and in fear and much trembling. Now, listen to what he said. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. I didn't try to talk you guys into this. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Remember all them boys back in Elijah time? We just read it. They were waiting on their God Baal to send, send fire to burn up their sacrifice. Their prophets, all 450 of them, some, and plus the ones from the grove. We didn't hear about those, but they were doing it at the time. But they were sitting there praying, cutting themselves, hollering at ball all day long. Nothing. Nothing. But when Elijah called on the Lord God, that was it. The arguments won. Every argument put, laid to rest. Who is God? Our God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. And Paul came not with, with enticing words and, and talking people and other stuff. He came with demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost. People saw it. This is what got people's attention. Come on, everybody say, I will have the power of God in my life. It'll start operating more and more, greater and greater. When I witness to people, there is power to show them change. Not just words, not just tell them they're going to have a better day. No, not just tell them to cheer up, but there's power coming in that they can tangibly feel, see, and notice the differences in their life because of you and I. Hallelujah. And Paul said, I don't want your faith to stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Now remember, the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous, it means the working and effectual Always working, dynamic in power, working prayer of a righteous in Christ Jesus brings forth the results. Remember, James said, pray for one another that you may be healed. Did you know praying for somebody that's sick, expect them by the power of God, your faith in his power, his love, his ability, it'll get them healed. Hallelujah. Just like that. Boom. Get them healed. Healing will take hold of them. Could be instantaneously, boom, or it could be, it could, but they will recover. They will get better. They will not die of it. They will not suffer through it anymore. Get better and better. The power of God. Glory be to God. This is what gets people's attention. Amen. You can tell people about avoiding hell and, and, and uh, making Jesus Lord so you don't have to burn for eternity. And the people aren't really interested in what's way in the future. They, they don't even have their own future plan. How, how can they have a vision for what could happen to them later if they don't accept Jesus? They can't. They don't even have a vision for their own life. They can't. They don't even know what they're eating for the next day. They don't know where rent money's coming in a month from now. But when you and I show up, but just the simple fact that Jesus died for them and loved them, and we, we have faith in God's power on us to get to them the help that they need, their life will change. And that's what Paul was saying. I didn't come to you with just wisdom of man's speech, with the gift of gab. I came to you with something tangible, something that will change your life, something that is real, that is the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I preaching or teaching today? We'll find out. <laughs> Glory be to God. John chapter 1, verse 12. You, as a child of God, are entitled to this power. Amen. You're entitled to pray for people and God hear you and change people's lives. You're entitled to lay hands on people and get them filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. You're entitled to have God's power to heal and cure wounds and, and pass hurts. In people's lives, the power of God's on your life. Not only that, the power of God's on your life to change your own life and get it straightened out where things have gone crooked and some things have gone sideways and not gone like you had wanted them to. God's power in your life to restore you and get you back on track. But we got to have faith in who in Christ Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for, for getting us connected back to our Heavenly Father's power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Our faith is in you, Lord. We'll do what you say and show us what to do. And we know this works out. We, this works out in the end for us. Hallelujah. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Everybody, thank you, Lord, for your power. First John chapter, John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. Did you see that? Those that believe on Jesus, he has given us power to become a son of God. You're not just some son of a human. You're not a daughter of a human. You're not cut from some monkey somewhere down in your ancestry line. You are a child of the Most High God created in His image, and Jesus came to give us power to be His children. Hallelujah. His children. The power of how oh, Daddy made everything. His children. He's got it all. We're His children. And power has given us to become His sons and daughters. Say thank you, Father. Thank you. Glory be to God. Psalms chapter 68, verse 35. God wants you to have his power. Not You shouldn't have to just witness in, in what you memorized. I got to memorize this so I know what to say to people to lead them to Jesus. No, 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 no. Just Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all you need. But have faith in the power. Believe in it. Trust in it. But trust that God has got something there every time. Know that when you pray, effectual changes are happening in somebody's life. When you pray for your own self and your family, effectual changes are happening. Because your faith is in the power of God, just like Paul said. He wants your faith in the power of God. Psalm chapter 68, verse 35. Oh God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power to his people. Amen. God giveth what? Strength, and God giveth power to his people. Blessed be God. Everybody say, God, thank you for giving me strength. Everybody say, I am strong. Everybody say, I am full of the power of God. Let's say that again. That felt good. I am strong, and I am full of the power of God. Everybody say that. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. I know I'm covering a lot of scriptures today, but we always want a lot of word to back it up. Amen. This is the third time I'm coming to you, Paul writes. In the month or two or three witnesses shall every word be established in the mouth of every, not month, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. I told you before and foretell you, as if I were present a second time, being absent now, I write to them which heretofore have sinned, and to all others that if I come again, I will not spare. Since you seek proof of Christ speaking in me, which you two word is not weak, but mighty in you. They're seeking proof of the anointing of Jesus speaking in him. He says, for he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. They wanted proof. Here Paul comes with the power of God. Once again, Paul had faith and the power of God in him to give it towards others. Amen. And we ought to have faith that we have the life and power of God in us to bring out to others. Come on, we've read this over and over in several, several different ways. It is the will of God that you have His power in your life. So don't fret about stuff. Don't, don't get discouraged about anything. Don't worry about the giants if they're giants in the land. Don't matter how big they are, how many they got. What matters is your faith and what Jesus Christ did. Because he came, he said, Paul, to get them out of the hands of the enemy, to give them the power of God, and get them then their inheritance. Amen. Get you the inheritance that rightly yours. Jesus bought and paid for all that on the cross. And this is Paul saying, for we also weak in him. For with us, we're nothing. We, we can't do anything. It's not our wisdom. It's not how long we Bible study. We're weak in him. But we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. Amen. See, see where we are weak, he is strong. We can trust in his ability or our inability. 
It is for us. It's his will to fill us with this power. The same power when Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but this I give unto you. Rise and walk in the name of Jesus. Peter had the power. Peter had the life of God in him. And he shared it with somebody else, crippled at gate, beautiful, hallelujah. That's what Jesus did when he shared the power with people that touched him to be healed, to, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to cast out the devils. There was the power of God on his life. And he wants that for us, for you and I. It belongs to us if we believe and have faith in Christ Jesus. In closing, I think, Paul praying here. This is Paul's prayer to people. This is by the Holy Spirit given to Paul to pray. This is the will of God in action. Paul says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention you of you in my prayer. I'm in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto all of us the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him. Paul's praying that the Holy Ghost give us revelation and wisdom and knowledge of God. Why? Because we are, we are so operating below the level God wants us to. The more you understand him, the more you know him, the more you understand his love for others, the more you will realize he wants his power to put forth to change their lives and get them out of the hands of the enemy. He wants that, and he wants to use you. He wants to get your own life out of the dredges of the enemy's grasp. Get them out of the enemy's talons. Get your life out of there and set you up on high and fill you with his power. Send you forth. Glory be to God that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what the hope of his calling is. You have a calling, folks. God has a plan, and his plan is full of power in your life, and he wants you to know it. And what is the riches of his glory? Of his inheritance in the saints. There we see it again. Did you know the Lord has a bunch of stuff, and he wants to share it with you? He's got all the gold and the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns it all. He made it all. And he wants to give it to you. It belongs to you, his child. And to get that, you're going to have to have revelation, knowledge of it, and don't let the enemy talk you out of it, because we got to get it by faith in Christ Jesus. Remember Jesus said, those that have faith in me, those that will believe, will get this stuff. And it's yours. Everybody say, I have an inheritance. Everybody, I have an inheritance. I am full of power, and I am gaining and increasing in the wisdom and knowledge of God every day. I'm going to understand what's mine to the fullest. When I lay hands on the sick, People get healed. Everybody say, these hands, lift up your hands. These hands, when they get laid on the sick, the sickness has to go. Amen. And Paul said, I want you to show them, Lord. Listen to Ephesians 1.19. We'll close here. He said, I want you to show them what is the exceeding greatness of your power to them that will believe. Show them, Lord, how great this power is. He wants to show it to us according to the working of your mighty power. It's the same power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. This, that's resurrection power. That power will restore back anything you've lost, let go, or left behind, or didn't take care of, and it fell apart. When that resurrection power comes into your life, if you'll have faith in this, your life can be restored, made whole, and he'll get you set on track. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on, folks, read Scripture today. Amen. Let me pray for everybody before we close. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for tonight. Lord, thank you that your power is available to everybody here listening to the sound of my voice. That you love them. You want them to have this, this resurrection power, Father. This power to change things. Lord, let them know it doesn't matter if they feel inadequate in their prayers or if they feel like they're, they're not really praying powerfully. Let them know all they got to do is just pray to you in the name of Jesus and you've heard and that they could have faith in your ability and that things will change. Just let them know that all they have to do is just have faith in you and this power. Have faith and not in the wisdom of man, but Paul said that we have faith in the power of God because you love us and we call you daddy. Help them, Lord, and increase them in this knowledge. Amen. So for the rest of this week, next week, and the weeks beyond, I want you to say every day I'm filled with the power of God. I'm anointed of God. 
I am strong in his might. Amen. I have peace in my life. I am free from the hands of the enemy. I've been delivered, all right, out of the clutches of Satan and his cohorts. I have victory over all things. Everybody say, I am a child of God. I'm, I'm Brother Mike. Jesus on the throne is Lord. Words of Life Ministry. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. Bye-bye.